What's going on, y'all? Married to Madison, um, season three, mm, season two, episode. Look, I'm gonna give y'all a brief synopsis of episode eleven. I didn't do it last week, and technically, I don't really need to do it this week. But I'm gonna just put them all together because, you know, last week basically, it really wasn't much to talk about. Um, and that's not saying that the episode wasn't good, but it just really wasn't worth the review because basically. Everybody, minus Mariah, they went to the um this little couples retreat uh, up in Blue Ridge. And, you know, everybody, it was basically an introduction of them getting there and getting settled and everybody coming together, figuring out where they're going to stay at, having fun. It was a lighthearted episode. It was cute. They was talking about cheating and, you know, kind of find out Lisa Nicole's husband, Darren, I think that's his name. He was basically like, it's cool to cheat while you dating, but when you marry and you decide to get married, you know, you can't do that. And I was like, what? So come to find out, he was cheating all up on everybody when he was dating, including Lisa Nicole. And, you know, she settled for that shit. And he was like, the way he kept on getting away with it was because she kept on taking him back. And I said, well, since you put it that way, I mean, hey. If she going to keep on taking you back, you might as well keep on doing it. But that's still fucked up to do anyway. I don't like that logic, you know. What makes being married more different than, you know, being boyfriend and girlfriend or in a committed relationship, you know, or any type of relationship, committed or not? I mean, whatever. It's called being faithful. And if I can't trust you to be faithful and to have my back in a relationship, even if we're not married or if we're not, you know, why would I trust you enough to want to be in a marriage with you and not think that in the back of my mind that you're going to be still cheating? Like, I know Lisa knows that probably still think that shit. You can't tell me she don't. But um, anyway, that was basically... That was basically what happened on episode... um From last week. And... What, what was his name? Not Eugene, but um, Greg. He was basically saying that, you know, um, it's not impossible. It's not possible for a man not to think about cheating or to think about another woman or some shit, even if they're in a relationship or whatever. I got where he was coming from, but boy, shh, but I understood. Because everybody thinks about somebody else when they're in a relationship regardless. they just It's just fucking human nature. That don't mean that you got to act on the impulse. But, um... Then Dr. Simone had told Toya or whatever that basically she did invite Mariah and Mariah might be popping up, okay? And that was basically the end of that episode that happened last week. This week, everyone is, um, you know, together. They doing the camping thing. They in the cabin, uh, fixing breakfast for everybody. And, you know, they out playing with each other, having a good time. What really threw me off was at the very beginning when everybody woke up, okay, they going to go over to Simone them cabin, and Simone was supposed to be cooking breakfast for everybody, but her husband, you know, Eugene up in the um, kitchen being, you know, doing what he do, I guess. But what threw me off was the fact that Quad was up there with her own makeup person, her own hairstylist, like she was still up in Atlanta, like she was finna go somewhere important. Baby, you are in the fucking woods, okay? This is the time where we don't give a fuck how you look, all right? We finna go out, we finna go play, we finna just be natural. What is wrong with that? Girl, you blew me with that shit. I said, are you goddamn serious? Get over your fucking self, okay? Ain't nobody in here looking at you but your husband and everybody else that already seen you without your wig. Come on, I like, stop playing. It, it was just a little bit too much. I thought she was doing too much with that one, but, you know, it was cool to see everybody come together. But then, Toy was kind of being a little messy, just a little bit, but I get why she said it. You know, she was warning them that, you know, Mariah might be showing up and Dr. Simone basically invited her. And Quad was like, wait a minute, what? You know, she felt some type of way because she was informed and thought that everybody else thought that she wasn't coming. And, you know, it's real. I don't like the way Dr. Simone went about it. You know, if everybody said that she wasn't coming, don't go behind the back and then go say, 
well, I think you should just pop up, you know, just in case and try to talk and, and, and be the peacemaker, and, um, you know, figure stuff out and talk to Quad or whatever and talk to the ladies. If that is not what they wanted to do on that trip at that moment, that is not what that does. You shouldn't be planning stuff behind people back. So I get why, you know, people were frustrated and everything. Do I think that Quad and Mariah needs to talk? Guess the fuck I do because I am so tired of Quad, you know, when her name pops up, she's feeling some type of way. She wants to get so upset. Like, girl, I get your issues with Mariah. Either let it go and move on or go on over there and just talk to the bitch and let it go from there, okay? You can't... Quiet is basically letting this girl control her fucking life, control her damn emotions, control what she does if, you know, you can't really do nothing because she's going to be in the present. So she's just, every time you hear her name, oh my God, my, my, my energy changes and this changes and uh, I just can't stand it. No, if it's that much, go ahead and talk about it to that person and get the fuck over it because I'm tired of hearing about the shit. But, um... <clears throat> So, yeah, Kwai kind of confronted Simone about it. And I guess the other girls was like, no, they didn't want um, Mariah there because it would have been some mess. And true enough, it would have been some mess if she would have been there. Because I honestly don't think that, I think she probably would have showed out in front of everybody there. And nothing would have got resolved. Because every time they do come, it comes to a time where it's opportunity for them to, you know, um, talk to each other or see each other it's always everybody there's always a crowd that's why i say huh mariah quiet and mariah just need to do a one-on-one -on -one with just them two not anybody else and let that shit go from there because you got everybody throwing their opinions about this and throwing their opinions about that and it's clear that everybody done took sides already on who who it is um who they fucking with or not do i think it's fair not necessarily because you know Mariah hasn't really told her side. I don't know if it's that she's refusing to talk in front of people or she thinks she don't need to talk or whatever. So, therefore, people are already, you know, forming their judgments on her past habits with them. But still, you know, she hasn't really said nothing. And, you know, she's doing her own stuff for this service. Just go ahead and end that shit. But, um, Kwai confronted Simone about that and said it was kind of messy and tried to say that, you know, uh, Toya was being messy for telling or, or, or saying it and, and, and talking about it. And she was like, I'm just trying to be the peacemaker. And Quad is like, if I don't want to talk to her, why do you keep on trying to p make situations that I have to talk to her or see her? And I agree with Quad. If I'm not fucking with somebody, don't, don't do that. Okay? Unless I say I want to, don't do that. If I didn't ask you, don't try to be a peacemaker. All right? I want to avoid the situation. I don't want no drama at this event right about now. I want to go to an event and let it be drama free. So let me handle that shit on my own. You stay the fuck out of it. And what they need to do is stop fucking telling their business to every goddamn body. If you're not going to settle it, shut the fuck up talking about it. You telling this camp, you telling this camp, and you telling this camp. And yet, none of y'all talk to each other about it. Like, shut up. That's how shit spread, and that's how shit get blown out of proportion, and that's how shit continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger for no fucking reason, okay? And, you know, Simone tried to act like she didn't remember telling Toya that she, about Mariah showing up, trying to make it seem like Toya was trying to be messy, but Simone, you did say that. You did say that, okay? She wasn't making that shit up, but they got past that. Um, Jackie Husband's finally come there, um... They all having a good time. They go uh, zip lining. At first, Dr. Heavenly didn't want to do it. But then, you know, because her husband went on ahead and did it. She was like, okay, I'm going to do it. Did y'all see when they woke up and Dr. Heavenly was like, good morning, daddy. Every time she say daddy, it just irks my soul. It does something disturbing to me. Like, no, no, <laughs> no. I can see if you fucking... I don't know why that's so acceptable, but I can see people doing it when you're fucking or whatever. And you be like, oh, daddy, you know, or poppy, whatever the fuck. Hey, okay, but in everyday life, daddy, you want this? No, I, you're not my dad. I'm not going to. No, no, it's just no. No, <laughs> just no. Um, After that, uh, they went, they played football. And, you know, the men, they was having this little discussion about, you know, uh, I guess cheating again and 
having a sad piece on a, a sad piece or whatever. Um, then they had this little counseling session where they was talking about the questions and how many times a week or should you have sex and all that stuff. And, you know, Toya, she's so open with her shit. She was like, we wanted to have sex once a week, but that shit don't really happen. But, you know, because they work a lot and all that shit, it's understandable. Then they started talking about, um, Dr. Ujig going to say something when you're in a marriage, basically. Because I think Greg was basically saying... Something about when you get married, the marriage is supposed to be the priority. And almost as if he was trying to say, if you have dreams or goals or whatever, that takes a back seat to the marriage, which I truly don't believe. I don't know. That's just a fucked up way of thinking if you ask me. And, <laughs> and Dr. Eugene, he going to say something like when you want to have kids, you know, when, when, when you come up into a marriage, if I come in with money. It's no longer my money. It's our money. She got a uterus. When we get married, it's no longer her uterus. It's our uterus. And I'm like, boo, no. It took Dr. Jackie's husband to come in and say, you know, when you want to have kids and you want to do stuff, you have to compromise. One person cannot make the decision for the whole thing, for the whole um, marriage, for two people. Y'all have to, you know, come to some type of compromise. And then Dr. Jackie got teary eyed because... She was basically saying, you know, she wanted to give him a son, but she couldn't give him that. And yet he still stuck around with her and loved her. I was like, oh, you know, Dr. Jackie is my favorite. There you go. There you go. She can be shady as shit. And I don't have to agree with everything that she does. But she the only bitch on there that got fucking common sense. Like all the way common sense. Okay. And she uses it. But, um, you know, Quad had a conversation with her husband about wanted to be on birth control because she's not the type of person who wants to get married, be in a marriage where she actually has to depend on her husband. And what if something goes wrong and they get a divorce and she has nothing to fall back on? She wants to still have that independent spirit and she's not ready to have the baby yet. She do want to have a child. I don't think she want to have a child with him. I'm just honest. I'm just being honest. But it was still kind of cute to see them together, you know, like that. And he was like, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But just don't get on no birth control right about now. Give us three more months and then we'll revisit this conversation and see what it is. And the way that they came together on a compromise, I like that. That was real cute. Um, This shit with Mariah. (sighs) Mariah having this conversation with Aiden. Aiden like, well, damn, what the fuck did I do? How they vote you off the island and then I get fucked around and, and, and get the, the, the backlash of it too? Like, I didn't do shit, you know? And he felt some type of way. And, um, you know, she was like, well, hey, it, it's just funny how, you know, last season or whatever, when, when Choir first came into the uh, circle, people were saying shit about her. Like, why the fuck Mariah, you know, hanging with her? And now all of a sudden, all, everybody is on her side and all this stuff and I don't know how it switched like that and once you see I'm gonna say what time come on tomorrow. Eight o'clock. Once you see um once you see the dynamic like like I said in the last review Mariah did have issue with the fact that more people was kind of drawn to Kwai, so she feels a type of way, and I think that shit is true, because every time Mariah talks, she talks as if, when she talks about Kwai, it's, she's talking as if, how come everybody is more drawn to her? What is it about Kwai that, like, that people like, and, you know, why are people turning on me, or whatever? It's your attitude. I'm not necessarily here for Kwai, but if it was between Kwai and Mariah, I would definitely choose Kwai, okay? You know... Mariah, you just seems so extra, and it seems like you're not being real. It seems like, you know, she's putting up a front. You know, it's like she's trying to fit in with the upper echelon of people, and this is not really who she is. And all this gay lingo, I hate when Quiet do it too. I hate when Mariah do it. I hate when anybody do it, and they overuse that shit. It's like when they go, she couldn't go on the – I'm glad she didn't show up today, look at them. I'm glad she didn't show up. Okay, but instead of going there, she goes on this glamping trip with another set of so-called friends. Like, everybody is her friend. And I just don't believe in that shit. Like, you can know 50 people, and you cannot tell me that all 50 of those people are your close friends, okay? These are close friends, in my opinion, are the ones that you can call every other day or every day and, you know, text all the time and do all this shit. 
that's close people, that's close friends. These other people, they may be your friend. They can be a friend or every now and then where you can, um, you know, go party with or associate or whatever. But everybody's not your friend, okay? I just, you know, everybody can't have your time, all right? And some people just there to play atmosphere. Some people just there to fucking kiss your ass. I don't know. Or be lackeys. Whatever. But everybody can't be your friend. I'm just saying. And all of a sudden, you get with this group of friends and you saying that they're your real good friend. And you telling them your business about what's going on between you and Quad. And I'm like, once again, stop telling everybody what's going on. Keep it between you. I just don't understand that. I don't tell my business at all. I don't. And if I do, I only tell it to the people that's involved. You know what I'm saying? And if only people that I truly, truly trust that I know will give me the good advice that I need. Other than that, I'm not saying shit to nobody else who don't need to know it. Okay? And it just felt so contrived and it felt so fake when she was with them at the glamping trip or whatever. And then, of course, Mama Lucy and Lake is there. And I'm like, damn, what the fuck does Lucy and Lake do? Because they always with Mariah. And they're her downfall, okay? Because they keep shit going, all right? I don't know, like, they just irk me, but other than that, um, I really, like I said, I really do want Mariah and Quad to just sit the fuck down, cause no lie, I kinda was here for Mariah when she was on the first season, but then, you know, all this shit just started popping up, and I was like, girl, you shit is doing the most, but, um, I really want them to sit down and actually have a grown-up conversation. No yelling, no going back and forth. Just you tell me what's going on in your life, and I'm going to tell you my perspective on this. And then we come to some type of conclusion in the middle, whether we're going to just let this shit go and be friends or let this shit go and not talk about each other at all and not deal with each other at all. That's all that I want because it's, it's getting tiring, and I want them to get back to everybody being as a whole, on the show if they bring it back for a third season because this is getting, like, bullshit. But, you know, that was cool. Then next week, Simone and Quad get into it a little bit. And I just, like, <laughs> Simone was talking to Quad and she walked the fuck out. Quad said, wait a minute, did she just walk away from me? Bitch, yes, she did. And I heard Toya and Simone got into it at the um, reunion. So, hmm, we shall see about that. Um, Yeah, so this is the review for episode 11 and 12. Really nothing, but it was two cute episodes. I actually like these two episodes. It was real fun, if you ask me. You know, I do like to see them with less drama. So, yeah, y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. And um, i see y'all later. Or i see y'all tomorrow. Love and hip-hop. Peace.